We are going to look at question 5 from the electrostatics uh, question book. If you do not have the book, it really doesn't matter because I will be putting the questions up. The first question is, why are the spheres on wooden stands? Spheres R and S, R has a charge of positive 8 microcoulombs and S has a charge of negative 4 microcoulombs. The reason why they are on wooden stands is because wood is an insulator. That is your answer. If they were on stands that are conductors, like metal stands, R would get electrons from the earth to neutralize this positive charge and S would give off electrons into the earth to neutralize the negative charge. The next question, spheres R and S are brought into contact and then separated by a small distance. Calculate the net charge on each of the spheres for two marks. When they touch and get separated again, they will have the same charge. So as I uh, said in my previous video on the basics of electrostatics or the introduction to electrostatics, you can say the new charge on each or the net charge on each, don't put both down, is the sum of the charges divided by two. Remember to include the negative. So your answer is positive two microcoulombs on each charge, which is two times ten to the negative six coulombs on each charge. When they touch and are separated, they will have the same charge. 5.3, draw the electric field pattern due to the two spheres. This is after they have touched. So they will both be positive, and that is the shape of the field pattern. Remember, the lines must not touch, they must not cross. Where they uh, are drawn away from the sphere, make them look like they touch it with 90 degrees, make the lines touch, and field lines always go away from positive. These sketches are normally three marks. Now they give us more information. After R and S have been in contact and separated, a third sphere T of charge positive 1 microcoulombs is placed between them. According to the sketch given, R is 10 cm from T and S is 20 cm from T. R and S have the same charge because they touched and separated. So R exerts a force on T, which is a repulsion force because they're both positive, and S also exerts a repulsion force on T because they are both positive. But R is much closer to T than S is to T. So the force that R exerts on T to the right will be much stronger than the force that S exerts on T. So your free body diagram, in 5.4 they ask you to draw a free body diagram showing the electrostatic force experienced by T due to R and S. R will exert a much greater force on T than what S will exert on T. So R pushes T to the right and S pushes T to the left. Remember a free body diagram is a dot with your forces moving out from the dot and remember to always color that dot in. For 5.5 the question is calculate the net electrostatic force experienced by T due to R and S. Now we can see from the previous question T experiences two forces, a repulsion force from R and a repulsion force from S. So we will work out one and then the other one. The force that S exerts on T, because it's force we use the equation for Coulomb's law, it's from your data sheet, K Coulomb's constant is also from the data sheet. Remember do not work in microcoulombs so it's 10 to the negative 6 for both of them and the distance between these centers must be in meters. So I first calculated the force that S exerts on T. There everything is. You can check the substitution. Your answer is 0 0.45 newtons to the left because S is push, trying to push T to the left. S repels T. The force that R exerts on T you substitute your values in. The distance is different. It's 10 centimeters, so it's 0 0,1 meters squared. That answer is 1,8 newtons to the right. R repels T to the right. The net force is going to be the sum of these two forces. I've taken to the right as positive. So the force of R on T is positive. The force of S on T is in the negative direction. Your answer is 1,35 newtons to the right or you can say towards S. Please remember if they ever give you the north, south, east, west um, directions, you have to refer to those directions and not to the left and to the right. 
just take note of these values that we have here, 0.45 newtons for the force of S on T and 1.8 newtons for R on T. I want to show you another way of calculating the second force. We're going to consider the following. We're going to calculate the second force by making use of proportionalities. The first force that we calculated was the force of S on T using the 20 centimeters between them and that answer was 0 0.45 newtons to the left. S repels T to the left. Remember now that your force is inversely proportional to R squared. So this distance is half of that distance. So 1 divided by a half squared gives you 4. So this force will be 4 times greater than that force because this is half the distance compared to the distance between S and T. So half, 1 divided by half squared gives you 4. So the force of R on T is 4 times greater than the force of S on T because this is half the distance of that. So it's 4 times 0 0.45 and you also get 1.8 Newtons and it's again to the right because R repels T to the right. This is the same answer we got using um, that equation on the previous page. The um, distance between R and T is half the distance between S and T. This is half of that distance. Therefore, the force of R on T will be four times greater than the force of S on T because of this inverse proportionality. They have mentioned it again. F is inversely proportional to R squared. Q1 and Q2 are the same. We are using charges R, S and T here, but if that's Q1, this would be Q1 and that is Q2. These are the same. So if this distance is half of that distance, this force will be four times that force. You don't have to work it out this way. You can work it out using F equals K Q times Q over R squared. The question for 5.6 is give the definition of electric field at a point. Now they love to ask this definition. You have to know it very, very well. The answer is the electric field at a point is the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. If you forget the definition, try to put this equation in words. This equation is on your data sheet. Electric field at a point is the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. 5.7 Calculate the magnitude of the net electric field at location T due to R and S. We have the net force at the point where T worked it out and T has a charge of 1 microcoulomb, positive 1 microcoulomb. So the electric field will be that net force divided by the charge of T. The net force was 1.35 and the charge of T is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Calculated in 5.5 and the charge on sphere T is filled in there. So our electric field is 1,35 times 10 to the 6. Remember the unit is Newton per coulomb. Comes from this equation, Newton per coulomb. If they had asked for the net electric field and left out the word magnitude, in this question they asked for the magnitude of the electric field. If they do not include the word magnitude, you would have to give the direction as well because electric fields are vectors. And in that case, you would say the direction would be to the right because the net field is to the right and this is a positive charge. Electric field is the direction in which a positive test charge would move.